my mom, on my level, you could be the very We are back with another video, and this should be very interesting. Top 10 right backs in the Premier League. Ty is crying right now because we recorded half of it and he messed up. <laughs> he included nine players and he realized so late. So we're recording this again because we're committed to you guys. But before we get started, make sure you guys like the video, comment your thoughts, make your top 10 in the comments, subscribe yeah. to the channel, subscribe to Never Found Trafford Tunnel. Listen, Ty, how you doing? I'm good, man. I can't believe that's the first in my whole years of streaming. I've never done it in my life. I can't believe it. You know what? I'm gonna blame this on. I went bed late last night, and I'm never doing that again. That that threw my mind off. That shows that I need to wake up refreshed next time for the stream. But yeah, guys, man, make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe. I think mine's gonna be at the top. Bane's is gonna be at the bottom. Mm. Um, but you got a couple rules as well for the people, isn't it? Yeah. So basically, someone like Cancelo, we know can play right back, but he's played majority of his type football at left back. So he's going to be in the left back list. Someone like Tom Yasser, for example, he made 20 or so starts at right back last year. He's only really made three or four starts at left back this year. So we're still including him in the right back list. And Cal Walker Peters, for example, we know very, very versatile, can play on both sides. And he's played the majority of his football on the right hand side this year. So we're going to include him in the right back list. Perfect. Yeah. Let's go. You start off with 10th. Yeah, right. My number 10 is Matty Cash. Mm -hmm. Um,. Matty Cash and Aaron Hickey were my two possibilities, by the way. So I'm just going to do an honourable shout-out to Brentford's Aaron Hickey. Come from Bologna. Like I said as well, this season, he hasn't made many mistakes. I think he's going to grow as the season's progress. Maybe in two years' time, he might be in it. But Matty Cash, for me, I'm putting him in there. Not because I think Matty Cash is exceptional, but I think my main thing as well, when I look at this Aston Villa team, is when they signed Lucas Digne a year and a half ago, people would probably have Lucas Digne in their top six left-backs in the league at that time. Mm -hmm. Since Digne signed, Matty Cash has actually outperformed Lucas Digne, who should be the better left-back. World Cup, you know, a, a France international, you could say. But Matty Cash is actually getting better for Aston Villa. And I feel like, you know, he's had a coach in Steven Gerrard that no players really performed. And he's actually been able to maintain some standards. So now he's playing for Poland as well. Now they've got Unai Emery coming in. Let's see what he can do. But um, I, I think Matty Cash is a solid right back. I don't put him up, up there with like, oh my God, he could sign for a better club. I think Aston Villa is like perfect for them and where he wants to be. So yeah, he's my number 10. Interesting. 10th, I've gone with Wan-Bissaka. I've said this before, I think Wan-Bissaka is a unique profile in terms of what you can do at right back and probably one of the most unique profiles in the Premier League. That get, your goes comments, like, get your comments in people if you agree. Listen, like he has that, obviously that, that gangly kind of style kind of thing. You never know if mm. he has control of the ball, but I've said this before. 1v1, you could argue, argue one of the best in the world. Yeah. Just 1v1. I do think wan is is low-key press resistant. And I said this... Like, I agree. Before, I actually agree with that, to be fair. And I said this before, like, obviously, for Manchester United, completely different story. He's not good enough to start for Manchester United. But for a mid-table side, he will look like one of the best right-backs in that kind of region kind of thing. From the do you, do you feel, okay, but when you look at the, the teams that you're saying, the mid-table teams, which I get, most of the mid-table teams, now you're looking at the Brentfords, you're looking at the Aston Villas or whatever, all their right-backs are actually okay on the ball. I'm not saying Aaron Ram Ram is absolutely woeful, but he's not great on the ball. Like, he is good but one you know, I said this before, but, I think sometimes his style makes him look like he's worse kind of thing, isn't it? If that okay. makes sense. Like how, like you know this certain place, for example, even like a Joe Matty, for example. Joe Matt is really, really yeah. good on the ball, but you know when you watch him? Yeah, it does, it's not pleasing on the eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah sometimes, yeah. yeah. And I feel like wan is in that mode kind of thing. Obviously not as good as Matt up on the ball, but I said this before. Let's look at wan Premier League history. 80-90 for Palace, very, very good. Mm. First two seasons at Manchester United, he was relatively good. Yeah. Like, yeah. people can't argue with that. Injury record, obviously, this year he's got injuries, but before this year... He was playing 35 plus games, kind of thing, or 34 mm, plus yeah. games. Yeah, that's yeah, very true. impressive, and I take that into consideration as well. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. It'll be interesting to see what people think of that. I think mm. with this with this list, there's going to be a few that we put in there, and people are going to raise eyebrows. But I suppose that's what it's about. People get mm. your comments in as well. Well, I'm a second attempt for you. So number nine, who you got? See, this is where I went with Matty Cash. I think Matty Cash okay. going forward, I think he's decent defensively. Still needs a bit of work, but I said this to you before. I think it's hard to judge these Aston Villa fullbacks just because they haven't had a proper winger to connect with. Yeah. Leon Bailey in and out of the side. 
And let's be honest, a lot of Aston Villa's players may play out wide, but they specialise centrally kind of thing. Mm, like you mm, get maybe someone like a Buendia, you know he wants to drift inside. Yeah. So I think yeah. it's very, very hard to judge. These lines, this one is what Mighty Cash was rated very, very highly at one point. Yeah. People, people are talking like he, he could play for a top six side. Yeah. So I do yeah, think he deserves some flowers, but listen, man, Steven Gerrard over the last what, year, I don't think any Villa play has really been helped, if that makes sense. No, I don't. Even someone like Ezri Collison randomly, like he was a very good centre back, mm-hmm. who I think had potential and he seems to hit a, like a plateau. So yeah. that is going to be so interesting to see what Unai Emery does. Even Danny Ings, can he get him back scoring goals? Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. My number nine, I've gone with Tommy Asu. So funny enough, obviously you mentioned him at the start. Um, I've gone with him as ninth because I just feel like in terms of, how do I put it? In terms of utility players, say Arsenal, right? They're going for the domestic cups. They want to go to the Europa League. They want to try and get as high as they can in the Premier League. When you're looking at teams and what you need in terms of depth, I would put Tommy Asu up there in the top 10 as well, utility players in the league. Comfortable at left back. Look what he done against Mo Salah, playing out of position a few weeks ago. Had him absolutely tied up like a shoelace. And then he could play centre-back as well, back three in Bologna on the right-hand side, comfortable. And then as a right-back as well, for Arsenal, he's been comfortable. He's very good in the air. He's physical. He is mobile as well. And he's strong. And I think sometimes with players like that, where you're, you're sort of getting mished and mashed around and you're not getting a consistent run, it's quite hard to maintain the levels of the rest of the team. But I feel like every time he comes in, he's just a solid player. And I think he gives you seven out of ten. I call it like he's like beans and toast. It's a safe meal. Everyone likes it. Um... But I, I like Tommy Asu. I don't think he's the right back that would be like, oh my God, he's going to take Arsenal to the next level. But in terms of right backs this year and what we, what, what I'm going to talk about, I think, he's a, I think he's a solid player, man. And obviously he's just not getting in right now because you've got the form of Ben White, who's only just started playing right back really properly this season. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I think Tommy Asu's um, a good player, man. Who have you got eighth? Ben White. Go on. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm disagreeing okay. with you straight away. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, so I've got Ben White as eighth. Um, a bit similar to Tomiyasu in the sense that I think he's very good defensively. I think actually, first of all, I'm gonna give Ben White his plaudits because there's some people that are gonna watch this. Like, how have you got Ben White eighth? But Ben White has been a very good right back for Arsenal this season. Maybe top three, four right backs in the league actually this season. However, he is naturally a centre back. I feel like with Arsenal and what he does is that he's there, but he also helps the other team rather than excelling, excelling himself. Because I don't think Ben White's the best at going forward, but he's very solid. He's good on the ball, very comfortable. He can drift into the centre-back role when they're in possession. And I think that allows, for example, when Zinchenko's back, Zinchenko, they can go in midfield and sort of Arteta and Pep can play their sort of football where it goes into a back three and Zinchenko slots in. Um, So I, I really like Ben White in terms of what he's done for Arsenal this year. I'm kind of surprised how good it's gone, actually, because I thought when he started the first couple of games there, I thought, is this just going to be like for now type thing? But he's actually overly performed and now he's cemented his, himself in the side as a centre, uh, as a right back. And I think that's probably a good thing for him because when you've got Gabriel and Saliba who are left foot, right foot, I was thinking like, will Ben White even get back in the centre back if he likes that left foot, right foot combo? But he's nailed down the right back spot. Um, I just feel like he could improve going forward into the final third. I know we've got an assist for Thomas Partey, for example, in the North London derby when he smashed it top bins. But I just feel like he could do a bit more going forward. But maybe that's not his role and that's not what his duty is. But um, yeah, he's, he's very, very good this season. I think he's, you know, impressed me. He's impressed Arsenal fans. And um, let's see what he does in a year's time. Is that going to be his new position or is he going to go back at centre-back? I can't wait to see him maybe 12 months' time. What do you think? Do you think you'd keep him there? Hundred percent. He's a quality footballer. Like, what? Yeah. Like, Arsenal long term. You're saying right next three years, Ben White right back. See, it depends because I still do think Gabriel is one of probably Arsenal's weakness in the back I end. Agree. Mm. But then, listen, it depends what Arsenal do in the window. For example, do they want to replace Gabriel, or do they want to replace maybe getting new another right back and then they move Ben White century? Because mm. the thing is, if Ben White is such a good footballer. Like yeah, yeah. in terms of like technical qualities, he could play well right back, centre back. He's played in midfield before for Brighton yeah. and Leeds. I think it was quality player kind of thing. Yeah. I think I think I think he's literally up to the manager because he's probably every manager's dream in that aspect. Yeah, that's fair. I'm guessing you've got him higher than, which is interesting. So I've got him Who's, eighth. Who's, who's your eighth? I got Tom Yasu here. I think defensively, okay. can like you said it before, can play right back, can play centre back, can play left back now. 
I think defensively, you've seen in terms of him in the air, very, very impressive. Very on the ball, competent. Going forward, does he need to offer a bit more? 100%. But then you also said, what's his role in the Arsenal side? Which is why I still get him. I still think he's replaceable if he was ever like an Arsenal, for example, starting 11 player. But in the squad, 100%. You would love someone like him. Other yeah. than maybe his injury record, which is frustrating. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, your number seven, you start. Seven. See, I've gone with Kyle Walker Peters. Okay. I said this before. I think it should be in the England squad for the World Cup. Mm-hmm. I think we know what you can do at both sides right back, left back, right wing back, left wing back. Going forward, in terms of his progressive carrying off the ball, dribbling, very, very good in my eyes. Yeah. We probably don't see it enough because he plays for Southampton. Mm-hmm. And you even saw it at Tottenham. He showed glimpses of. Yo, I'm a competent fullback kind of thing. Like you saw when yeah. he got a hat trick of assists against Bournemouth. Yeah, yeah. Very, very impressive. And like, it's just one of them ones. He's unlucky that he plays for Southampton. Yeah. But he needed that step down to kind of cement his place as a Premier League fullback. Yes, that's it. That's but now it. he should be looking for a move up if Southampton, for example, don't kind of progress because it's hard for Ralph Aston or they have a very young squad. And maybe someone like Leicester, we know Leicester's in record of injuries. Someone like Kyle Walker Peters can play on either side. Will be a good step up. Yeah, that's mad. I've got him exactly the same, number mm. seven. I'm not even going to give it a spill. I think everything you just said there, I completely echo. I think he's been very consistent and it's gone kind of under the radar because he's at Southampton. But he's been very comfortable left back, very comfortable right back. Played well against us earlier in the season. He's very, he's very good in terms of his ball carrying abilities, being able to dribble as well. I think that's he's underrated. I don't think there's loads of right backs nowadays that okay, they get forward and they can cross and stuff. But I'm one about getting the ball and dribbling, mm. he can actually dribble. And I think that's an underrated quality for a right back. So yeah, man, I had Kyle Walker, Peter seventh. And I think if he's looking to get a move, he's that type of player that I can see playing for a club consistently around that Europa League mark. That's what I think. So I've got him number seven as well. Number six, you go first. Diogo Dallo. Interesting. Explain. Yeah, I've got, I've got Diallo, uh, Dallo, sorry, Dallo six. Um, first of all, Diogo Dallo, as a Man United fan, me being here, I've, I've, I've seen the whole sort of process of the last three, four years with him. Came as a right back under Mourinho from Porto. Sort of, you know, he played about 10 games for Porto's first team. Mm. Mourinho does not sign players if he doesn't believe in their qualities or know something about them. Especially, especially defenders. Defend, exactly, especially mm. defenders. Diogo Dallo came in and he had a bit of a tough time, to be honest. He's been in and out of the side. He's had a few injuries. Some managers haven't fancied him. And I think for a, t- a player that young, when you're in the Portugal youth team as well, it can be quite tough mentally. Like, you're going through some challenges there. Like, at a young age, you're at a big club like Manchester United. You're thinking, like, I want to be here because I might not get this opportunity again. But do I go because I need first-team football? And I feel like when Ten Hag come in, he might have been one of them players that people were looking at. You know, we might get rid and get right back in. However, he said, no, new manager. I'm going to show him why I need to be here. And he just keeps delivering, you know. In the pre-season, I'd put him as maybe top three performers with Sancho and Martial in terms of what he'd done for us in pre-season. And also, it's the most improved aspect for me. He, sh- he surprised people. He shocked people. And he keeps getting better and better. You look at his game against Dan Juma last year where he was getting cooked 1v1 in the Champions League to now 1v1 looking much better. I'm not saying he's the best, but he's looking much better. Aerial ability is improving. Look at the back post headers he's slotting in at the moment and clearing away from the line, helping the central defenders. He's comfortable sitting into midfield. How Zinchenko and Cancelo kind of do it in that sort of tactical aspect. He's very comfortable on the ball. And he's a listener. Ten Hag has said that he's willing to listen. He's developing loads every single game positionally and everything. And that's what you want. You want players at 22 to keep getting better. You don't want them to peak at 22. And his levels are going to keep improving. So, yeah, for me, Diogo Dallo sixth. I'm excited to see how long he can keep progressing for. But... I don't want him to get drained out. He's played a lot of games and Man United need another right back to have competition there because we 100% need it. Interesting. Who have you got sixth? I've gone with Ben White. you got Ben White sixth? Yeah. yeah I, I, I have been very, very impressed with Ben White this year. I've said, I think I made a TikTok the other day. He's been top two right backs in the Premier League for me this year. Who's the other one? Trippier. Yeah, fair, fair, fair. When I look at Ben White, defensively, we know he's a Billy's. In possession, quality, very, very good footballer. Mm-hmm. Going forward, I've been surprised how well he's linked up with Mikhail Saka down the right hand side mm-hmm. in terms of at times overlapping, at times underlapping. Like, what's the weakness in his game? 
the final third aspect. Which will develop, because considering where he's played majority of his football centre-back, holding midfield. And I, I don't want to be lazy here, but aerially, he's not been tested as much. But when he was tested at centre-back, he wasn't the best in the air. However, at the right-back, he's not really been tested in that area as much. Unless we're in his full-backs, do they have to be as good as in the air as a no, centre-back? No, you don't. You don't. You don't. You don't. Which is why, like, listen, man, full credit to Ben White. Full credit to Arteta for moving to right-back. Mm. I thought, like, they, listen, he's claimed his place. Yeah. He yeah. has to be signed for England somehow, some way, for me. That's how good he is. Ooh. See, I would have Trippier and Luke Shaw at the moment. But listen, you can play Ben White centre-back in the back three. If England go down that route. Yeah, if they go down that route, brilliant. No matter we'll what, for me, Ben part, White has to be signed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you go to back three, yeah, I'm happy to have him right centre-back. Definitely, no doubt. I think he deserves full credit kind of thing, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm with that. I'm with Number that. five is Mina. Yeah. This is where I've got Dalo. I think Dalo... Listen, frustrated, frustrating me at times. In terms of, I still think, I said this at the start of the season, his final third play still could improve. Let's really, before this season, he's crossing with Shambolic. Yeah. I think in possession, we know very, very tidy, even last season, in terms of progressive passing, all of that stuff, or one of the best in the side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really, very, very good. I think defensively, remember when he got cooked against Dan Juma? And I kind yeah. of backed him. Yeah. And I was like... He was doing a different role in terms yeah, of... Yeah, because I remember you and Biz, you and Biz yeah. arguing. <laughs> like, I remember I kind of backed him during that time just because I thought it was a difficult job in terms of... That was the first time we, we really... Yeah, and, we, and you know what? The wing-backs and uh, the, the wingers weren't helping at all. Yeah, so I thought that was... Yeah. Bit, like, don't get me wrong, he got cooked. It was bad, but I don't mm. think he was solely to blame. And I am just think, defensively, now we've got a better defensive unit who's really cooked it. Mm-hmm. Has there been moments maybe he could do better on the ball at times this year? Yeah. But then you said it as well. He's played a lot of football. A lot. Of he football. hasn't been rested at all. Like, we haven't really he even had, like, for example, wan has been injured. Tenar hasn't really played Lindelof yeah, right back one or two games. Out alone. Yeah. yeah. And I think he deserves immense credit. And I, I, I think defensively, by the way, in the air, I think he's probably the best right back in the league. Yeah, he he's his back post headers against West Ham. Even Gary Neville mm-hmm. was there, who the right back was just saying, "It's this you don't understand how hard it is because you're yeah. doing three things at once. You're watching the ball, trying to position yourself, trying to watch mm-hmm. the player, and then get contact. It, it's incredible, really. Like and especially because um, let's be honest, you know how strikers are. They're gonna kind of peel off the fullback, yeah, and lean on you and stuff. Yeah, as well. yeah. and I feel like he, he's done an incredible job by that. Even Brentford last year, I thought yeah. that was a phenomenal game from a defensive aerial point of view. Yeah, yeah. No, so I like that. Fair play to him, innit? Okay. So well, obviously, he still five. could do a lot more kind of thing, innit? Yeah, that's the thing. That's why I didn't want to put him too high. Because people mm. say, oh, but he's only, he's only been this season. Dude. You know, like, I have to... I, that's why I was like, Ben White 8th, Dallow 6th, because Dallow is more of a natural mm. right back as well. But um, yeah, man. So in number five, I think this one's going to raise a few eyebrows because of the injury. But for me, in terms of when he's available, when he's playing... I think Ricardo Pereira is a brilliant right back. I really do. I really like this player. This is the type of player that if we were looking at signing Maguire a few years ago, this was the type of player I'm thinking I want to sign. Ricardo Pereira, a proper right back. He's brilliant going forward. I remember his goal against City a few years back. Very good going forward. He's a very solid defender. He's quick. He's so up and down, athletic. The thing is, obviously, there's a question mark after all this. Will he come back the same player? I think he's 28 now, 28, 29 maybe, potentially. Will he come back the same player? I I don't know. But that's a question that we we have to see if he can answer. But in terms of, you know, my right backs and if he was fit, Ricardo Pereira, number five. I think he's one of them players that was getting his plaudits a few years back and or even maybe 18 to 24 months ago. But he's kind Mm -hmm. of gone under the radar now and he's become that forgotten player. But I haven't forgotten him. I haven't forgotten him. I really like him. Good player. Solid everywhere. He has the ability to play for a top four, top five side for me if he was back fit and performing. Mm. So, yeah, man, Ricardo Pereira gets in there. And I don't think people will remember him. I think when people are doing this list now and they've got to this point, they probably haven't even thought of Ricardo Pereira. But I did. But I think rightly so, they've forgotten about him. Hasn't played a minute of football this year. Yeah, Last season, last season made 13 starts. The season before that made 10. yeah. It's been tough. Like, over the last three years, you could argue he's barely had any football. I think yeah. currently he's done his Achilles. Yeah. He, he's had injury 
after in and you know what I feel so sad for him Baines. They're not even little muscular injuries. He keeps getting broken bones, yeah. broken ankles. At 1920 he done his cruciate ligament rupture, missed 310 days, 35 games for Leicester. Wow. That's that's basically the entire year. Yeah. I think mentally listen players really deserve credit for coming back from these serious injuries and stuff, isn't it? Mm. Don't get me wrong, I don't doubt Ricardo Pereira's ability because there was a point where I feel like Man City were even linked with him at one point. Yeah, 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 yeah. The 18, 19 season. Mm. But if you were to say it, a player's best ability is availability. It's availability. And I feel like that's what lets him down massively. And that's why I got other right backs ahead of him. If it worked yeah. for that, just ability, listen, he, he's there for top five. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, mm. that's fair. But that's just yeah. a frustrating thing I have with him, yeah. kind of thing, isn't it? Yeah. Number four, is it you? Yeah, it is. Go yeah, on. so number four. Oh! <laughs> Trippier. Go on. Tough. This is tough. Really tough. It's a toss-up between him and the next person I've got in number three. I'm going to go with Kieran Trippier because if he was at a top four side, would he be as good as what he is at Newcastle? They play a bit deeper. He's one of the main guys there. They play a way that kind of suits him a bit more pragmatic, I'd say. But, you know, I've got to be realistic. Man United were linked to Trippier last year for like 10, 12 million. There was a lot, sort of a lot of 50-50 people. I want him. I don't want him. I remember his time at Atletico. He was okay towards the end. But everyone, it kind of felt to me that like he was coming towards us, not an end, but he was kind of heading that way where he'd go Atletico, then he would go... Oh, man, I thought he was one of the best right backs in the world at Atletico. Oh, see, see, I, as towards the end, I thought, you know, he's a good player still, very solid, but mm. would he go to a top four club? Like, can you go from Burnley to Atletico a bit, like, which is still up, but uh, up again at 31 or whatever he is? Was that Tottenham, though, you forget? Uh, yeah, like, yeah, Tottenham, Tottenham, yeah, Tottenham as well, sorry, yeah, so Tottenham, Atletico, that type of level, that's what I was like, yeah, do you know what? I like him there, I like it. Mm. And he's gone to Newcastle and he's excelling. Great final ball delivery. Good leader as well. He's become captain in some games. Great leadership. Um, he's not really put a foot wrong this year for Eddie Howe. He seems to get everything clicking. He's not been injury prone at all. You know, you think he had like a couple of games where he missed. But other than that, he's been very solid. So I think Chippy, a comfortable left back, right back. Great final ball, set piece taker as well. Um, he's got to be in the top four for me. And I think I agree with you. In terms of what he said about right backs this season, he is in the top two with probably Ben White and then Dallow third. I'd probably say that's mm. the top three. No joke, man. I know Reese James obviously is a great player, but he's been injured at the moment. Um, so yeah, man, I'm gonna go with Trippier fourth, but this this third, fourth, like he 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 was in there. Do you know what I mean? It's it's so hard, man. I got him fourth as well. Listen, okay. I think, I, I think he deserves I thought you were gonna have him third, you know. Nah, I got him fourth. I think he deserves immense flowers, by the way. Like, yeah, yeah. You said man. it. Atletico for me was one of the best right backs in the world. Newcastle, listen, he had that little injury last year. This season, he's played every single minute, or he's played every single game, kind of thing, innit? Mm -hmm. We know what he can do from set pieces as well. Brilliant set piece taker. England for your kick, Croatia, everyone remembers that. Yeah. And I just think overall, like, he, he's a competent fullback. Even at Tottenham, people forget he was the one that replaced Kyle Walker. Do you regret not si us signing him now? I said I wanted him, though. Okay, fair. For, for, for yeah. £10 million, pounds, I, I still think he's better than Dalot, for example. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. know what, I, I, with hand up. I was 50 50 with it, but I think we could have just grabbed him for three years, man. I think I think it depended, depended on the price. If you're talking 10 to 15, you can't complain to that. How much are they getting for Newcastle in the end? I can't even remember. Yeah, I'm not too uh, sure, but listen, for 10 to 15, which is what I think we were linked with, I think that's a calm buy. 12 million. Listen, man, 12 million for Kieran Trippier. Mm. But I think remember for Athletic, he had that ban as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gambling, yeah, yeah. I think it was or something, innit? Yeah, yeah. So maybe Athletic might have wanted to get rid of him for a bit cheaper or something. Not too yeah, sure. True. But you never know, kind of thing. But listen, probably, probably would have been double the price if we came in. <laughs> listen, no matter what he deserves, immense credit should be on the plane to the World Cup yeah. comfortably. Yeah. Third is me, innit? Mm. I got no Cal Walker. Same. I think if we're talking, like, he probably goes down as one of the best right backs in the Premier League. Yeah. Ever. Do you know what? It's mad. When you actually look at it, yeah, I was chatting to maybe Daps about it. In terms of right backs, when you look at Man City, Zabaleta, and then into Walker, mm. for the last probably nearly 15 years, they've actually had two of the best right backs ever in the Premier League. 
Mm. And you Crazy. look at Pauka, for example, everyone knows about his pace, but then also the way he settled in in terms of, don't get me wrong, he's probably arguably one of the weakest in terms of technical abilities in that Man City squad, but you wouldn't necessarily look at Pauka and say you look out of place. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, you yeah, can yeah, compete yeah. with them kind of thing, innit? Yeah. And I think, listen, going forward, we know what you can offer. Defensively, we know what you can offer. Can play in a back three at centre-back as well. What's it not to like? Yeah, I agree with you. I think And I injuries, think by the way, don't get me wrong, now he's the bit ageing kind of thing, innit? But he's mm. consistently played over 30 games, even for Tottenham. And there was a season, they played 37 starts from 38. Yeah, that's incredible. And his recovery pace is absolutely mm. mad. I'm hoping that he can still get one good year out of himself before the injuries really take his toll. Because the thing is, obviously, when you're such a quick player and you mainly rely on pace as your attribute, mm. once you start getting injuries, obviously, your pace naturally lessens because, obviously, your muscles get worse and, and you do naturally age, not playing as consistently. So hopefully he can still give City another year in terms of, obviously, playing at the highest level. But, yeah, Carl Walker, man, he's another one that kind of deserves his flowers. I think when he retires... And people talk about right backs like 15, 20 years' time. People need to remember him because I think he could easily slip under the radar, man. But um, yeah, I've got him third as well. And my number two, because this let's is the one it. where. Let's, let's do it together, kind of thing, innit? In terms of everyone knows number two is reshame slash strength. Yep. So let, let, let's debate this because. Yeah. Who have you got second? So second, I've gone with Trent. And first, I've got Reese James. Um, it's a tight one, but not a tight one for me. I feel like this year, this season alone, even just watching him, has like made is has made my mind easier to make my mind up. I feel like with Trent, you know what he's gonna do going forward. He's great at like passing through the lines. He's great with his final ball. But Reese James also playing as a wing back. I get it. So he has more license to get into the final third. But we have got to take that into account. Formation four four and whatever three three four three and stuff like that. Um, but I, I, I think Reese James has got a very good final ball as well. He can strike a ball great as well when he gets into them final third positions. But for me, obviously, defensively, I just feel like he's much more solid than what, what Trent Alexander-Arnold is. I'm not saying that Trent Alexander-Arnold is the worst defender. He maybe doesn't get as much help from Mo Salah as he has or should have over the years. Mo Salah seems to be maturing in that side, though. I see him tracking back more and more as he's getting older. And I feel that is to help Trent out because Trent, helps him out going forward. So it should be the same going back. But for me, I just feel like if I'm picking my team and you said to me, right, you could pick a draft team and you have a back four and you could pick Trent or James, I'm going with Reese James. I just feel like he's more solid overall as the profile as a as a right back. I think that's what it is. It's like that. I look at like, if you've got a moon, if the moon's out at night and it looks nice and it's pretty as a half moon, you're like, oh, that's a nice moon tonight. But when you walk out of your yard, and you see that full moon shining, Baines. You're like, wow, that moon's like... Reese James is the full moon for me in terms of right back, in terms okay. of and Trent. And Trent is the half moon. But do you think, hand on heart, Reese James has been better than Trent over the last three to four years? Because for me, the answer is no. You Not could argue three to profile, four years, but yeah. You could argue profile. Therefore, Reese James is the more complete footballer. Yeah. But I think in terms of what we've actually seen, in terms of... Let's be honest, Reece James does pick up a lot of injuries. Injury yeah. again right now, uh, when yeah. we're recording this. That's a massive part for me. Trent, let's be honest, this season hasn't been great. But over the last three to four years, you could argue he's transformed the right, posi- right back position completely. Like he, for me, I hate using that word, but I think he's a generational footballer because he transformed that position. Yeah, I get it. I get it. And I understand kind of your logic in terms of the generational side, I think mm. he does have, have something different to what uh, a Reese James has. Because Reese James, you look at him as like more of like a right back who could slot into football back in the early 2000s because mm. the way he is. Whereas Trent is more like the modern, modern type of type of right back. But if you're asking me to judge my top 10 of what I like in a player and who I think I'd want, that's why I go Reese James. I'm not even discrediting Trent because I think Trent is a very good player, but I just feel like no, I would want Reese James in my team. I think if I had to pick one out of the three, obviously Cancelo is number one for me, then Reese James mm-hmm. second, and I actually have Trent third. But the, the thing is with Trent is like, he's hit these heights now, right? How much better can he get? Whereas with Reese James, I feel like if he can try and get over these injury problems and he can come, he's still young as well, but I think he's 22. Mm-hmm. If Reese James can keep developing, like mm-hmm. how good... Can he still get like, I don't know. When I look at him right now, has not saying Trent has hit his ceiling, but 
has Trent got loads of levels he can still go up? Or has Reese James got the more levels? I feel like Reese James has got more room to still improve, whereas I feel like Trent, while he's young, is going to be the best version of himself while he's still young. I think when he gets to like 28, 29, 30, I don't know if he's still going to be as effective as he is now. Whereas I think Reese James, even when he's 27, 28, he's going to be strong, powerful. See, I don't know, because I don't think Trent relies on his physical attributes at all. Mm. Like Trent is literally technical ability kind of thing down to a T, isn't it? Yeah. Crossing from the passing, incredible passing range, by the way. Yeah. Which is why like, but does he even he... but does he but does he stay at right back? Like is he gonna be that yes. player who goes back into midfield? I hope not. And I made a video this on this the other day. Trent is the best right back in the world over the last three to four years. Or top mm. three, let's say. Argument sake. Yeah. Why do people want to move him away from that position when he specialized it? He could retire as for me, the best right back the Premier League's ever seen. Because you could argue he's already top ten. Or higher mm. at this current stage if you retired today. Because mm. what? In the Premier League over the last three to four years, he's got like over 40 assists from right back. Yeah. That's unheard of. Mm. I, mm. I've gone with Trent first, personally, kind of thing, isn't it? I was going to say, is Trent your number one? I've gone with Trent first, Reece James second. I think Reece James is the better footballer. And I think he probably will be the better right back. But as I said, hand on heart, you cannot tell me. I don't think Reece James has been better than Trent. Over the last three to four years. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I do agree with that. But then I think as an overall right, right back and what I want in consistency, I feel like mm. I'll get that more out of James than I would Trent. It's such a good debate. The thing is, I said this, one or two mm. years time, I think he'll definitely be Trent. Uh, sorry, we shame, sorry. Yeah. If obviously he stays injury free. But mm. at this current stage, 5th of November, the time we're recording this, 12.56, it has to be Trent for me. Okay. I said this, like surely as he develops or gets older, his defensive game should improve as well. Because I know a lot of people might disagree, but I think his defensive game has improved. Mm. And I said this before, remember Trent be- around what was it? Uh, the 20-21 season, when Liverpool had loads of injuries at uh, centre-back. Okay, when it just got fourth, yeah? Mm. And remember Trent got destroyed by, was it Asensio? Sendio or Vinicius, one of them in the Champions League. Might have been Vinicius, I can't remember. But no, but when Vinicius. I think Tony Cruz made yeah. a pass off Trent kind of thing, innit? Okay, okay. From that point, I, I drew Oh, wait, wait, like, you're not on about the Champions League. Nah, it's not Champions League final. No, not last year, the year before that. When okay. I, I played them in the semis. Semi, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I looked at Trent after that point and I'm like, okay, what are you going to do? And I felt like his defensive game actually improved. Last season, I said this. Last season, Trent did not make a lot of mistakes defensively. Mm. And I've always said this here. Don't get me wrong, even though he plays for Liverpool, I've always backed up Trent in this aspect. In terms of every single mistake Trent makes is so highlighted. Yeah. And I look at every other fullback and I'm like, okay, you're making a similar mistake, but no one wants to talk about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I've also yeah. said this, like, and I think a couple, I can't remember what pundit said this. A lot of people in, for example, England focus on what a player can't do instead of what a player can do. Yeah, in terms of what Trent that, that can is, that do, is media, that is the media. 100%. Yeah, in terms of what Trent can do, we haven't seen anything like him. Mm. Mm. And that's why, like, listen, I, I have to give him his flowers, kind of thing, because that twenty-four Champions League winner, Premier League winner, FA Cup winner, League Cup winner, you've literally completed football from a club yeah. point of view. Yeah, no, and exactly. you played a vital part exactly. in your team success. Exactly. Every single one of formidable career so far to be mm. fair and I think it will be interesting now to see if Reese James is out of the World Cup you know will Trent come in and play will Luke Shaw Trippier you've got options now there and I think one of I think all three of them should see game time where Trent mm. was probably looking at not really seeing game time the Reese James injury could be a blessing for him obviously sad for Reese James but it could be a blessing for him in terms of establishing himself again you know, show him what he can do for England as a right back. Because I think for Liverpool, we all know what he can do, but he hasn't really been as effective for England even at right back as what he is for 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 Liverpool. It'll be interesting to see if we can make that transition. And I also got like, it's not really a hot take here, but I said this. I think no matter what people say, I still think Trent's a better right back than he's a right wing back. Like if England were playing a three at the back and he's is a wing back formation, trip your place. Yeah. Because what does Trent specialise in? getting the ball from deep, spraying the ball, crossing the ball from deep. I don't think you get the same license as a wing-back to do that. And secondly, as a wing-back, for example, you're probably... Yeah, yeah, Trent's a, a deep crosser. I think yeah. Chippick more hit the byline. 
And I think when you're looking at, for example, going forward from a wing back, you're asking maybe to dribble a bit more. Then you're relying a bit more on the physical attributes of a footballer kind of thing. I don't yeah. think that's Trent's speciality. No, no, I'd agree. Right back over, right wing mm. back. I think, yeah, Chippy and Reese James definitely Even though that people more. say Trent's a bad defender, I still think it's yeah, a right yeah, back role. Yeah, more of a back four. Yeah, mm. yeah, no, I'd agree with that. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. 100%. But well, that's our top 10. Wow. Top 10. So just to go through mine, mine was number 10, Matty Cash. Number nine, Tomiyasu. Number eight, Ben White. Number seven, Carl Walker-Peters. Six, Diogo Dallo. Number five, questionable, I love, I love Ricardo Pereira. Number four, Trippier. Three, Kyle Walker. Two, Trent. And number one, Reese James. Obviously highlighting at the start of the video that Cancelo, we're going to do in a left-back list over right-back. My top ten, ten, one, Bissaka. Nine, Cash. Eight, Tomiyasu. Seven, Kyle Walker-Peters. Six, Ben White. Five, Dallo. Four, Trippier. Three, Kyle Walker, two, Reese James, and number one, Trent Alexander-Arnold. Mm. Make sure you comment yours below, people, as well, man. I mean, it'd be oh, all well, I know, we're getting cooked for this. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're getting cooked for the Cal- uh, Ricardo Pereira take, take, I think, yeah. and the Ben White. Yeah. I'm probably going to get cooked for the Trent first thing. And the Wambasaka. Yeah. But yeah. the game's a game, and the, the game's football's game. a, yeah, that's what it, you call man. it, a pinnated game kind of thing. Everyone sees football exactly. differently. Well, listen, make sure you guys like the video, comment your thoughts on the top 10, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to Ty's channels, Trap a Tunnel, Never a Foul. Big up, big and up. And we will be back soon with Centre Backs. Centre Backs. It's oh, going to be even harder. God, it'll be so hard. Oh, But we'll be back soon. Big up. Big up.